In this example, we're going to look at recursive functions over the hand data type as defined in lecture 1b. So a quick recap, um, we defined a hand data type as a recursive data type. So every hand of cards <clears throat> is viewed as either the empty hand or the result of adding a card to a hand. And remember, these add and empty are the constructors uh, of our data type and they are names that we've chosen. We could have called this anything we like, we chose add, but it's nothing that is already known to Haskell. It's something that we decided to call the constructor for hands of cards. And here's a particular example of a hand built using two cards, uh, David and Death, namely the King of Hearts and the Ace of Spades. And we could put the Death card on the top of the deck that we get by adding David to the empty hand. So it's a hand with two cards in. So in this example, we're going to look at how to define a function called split hand, which takes as input a hand of cards and produces a pair of hands, the pile containing the red cards and another pile containing the black cards. So every card in the original hand should end up in either the red pile or the black pile. These should be all red and these should be all black. And um, the colors are simply members of the simple enumeration type, either red or black. And we have a handy function that, that can take a suit and tell us what color it is. Um, and in fact, I think it will be useful to extend that to include a function for the color of a card. Right, so let's do that right away. Color of a card. Um, let's say the color of the card C is the um, color of the suit of the card. So that's, uh, without further ado, we have a useful function for the color of a given card. So the split hand function has to be defined using recursion, and that's inevitable because if we want to do anything interesting with a recursive data type, we're going to have to use a recursive function to get at all of it. And what this short video is going to illustrate are three different methods of building this function. They're all useful methods. They all have their advantages and possibly disadvantages. And having an um, understanding of a variety of ways of building recursive functions is useful because in some contexts, it's much easier to use one style of recursion than another. In this particular example, I'm not sure there is a huge difference between the difficulty, but I'm going to start with what I think is conceptually the simplest method. And that consists of defining the split hand function in terms of a helper function, which selects, and I'm going to call the function select, the red cards from the hand in order to get the first part of the answer and to select the black cards from the hand in order to get the second part. So the, that requires me to define a function select and the type of that function will take a hand of cards and produce a hand. Well, actually, that's not quite the type. The first argument will be the color we're looking for. And given the color and a hand, we'll get all of the cards from that hand which have that given color. OK, so select some color from a hand. Well, what does a hand look like? It's either empty or the, we're selecting a color from a non-empty hand, and a non-empty hand is the addition of a card to another hand. So there are two cases. Let's start with the easiest one, the first one, the base case. To select the colored cards of a given color from a hand, the empty hand, well, the only thing we can do is return the empty hand. There are no cards in that hand to return. In the second case, it depends. It depends on whether the color that we're looking for matches the color of the card. So I'm going to use a guard to indicate that choice. If the color we're looking for is equal to the, the color of the card, C, then the answer will be, well, we want to have this card as one of the cards in the answer. So we're going to add C to. What are we going to add it to? Well, we're going to do recurs recursively look for all these colored cards. We're going to look for all of these guys in the rest of the deck. In other words, we're going to look for all of those colored cards in the rest of the deck. Now, what happens when that's not the case, when the first card doesn't have that color? That's the otherwise case. Well, in the otherwise case, it's going to be similar, except we're going to ignore this card because that was a black card or a, a card that didn't have this color. Sorry. 
And so then the answer will simply be the recursive call without any extras. So we recursively find and select from the rest of the deck and we either add the card at the top of the deck if it has the right colour that we're looking for or not. So I, th I would say that in some sense this is conceptually the simplest definition. Now the other definitions are going to use many of the same ingredients, for example this kind of case analysis and, a kind of, and pattern matching, um, but we'll use them in slightly different ways. So let's look at the second version of this, and that is the direct recursive definition. So that, that is where we're, instead of using recursion in a helper function, we're going to try and construct the answer, the pair of hands, directly using a recursive definition of split hand. Now I think this is a slightly more difficult way of doing it, but, but um, once you see the basic trick, then I think it suddenly becomes much easier. Okay, so let's define it directly with recursion. So the split hand is going to look at the empty case, and in this case we're returning, remember, a hand, a pair of uh, hands. So it's two empty piles of cards we can return. We're splitting this into two piles, then both of, both of the piles will be empty. Um, otherwise, otherwise we are splitting a hand which has at least one card in it. We call that card C. And what will that give us? Well, we'll do the same case analysis as we did, similar case analysis to what we did last time. It's not exactly the same because we're not looking for a colour. We'll do a case analysis on the colour of the card, this thing here. So if the colour of the card is red, then we're going to do one thing. And otherwise, we're going to do something else. So in the case that the card is red, then we want to keep that card, we want to add that card to the red pile that we get in the rest of the, um, the job. So we're, we're going to try and define this thing, the, the answer we want, using the standard recursion pattern, split hand applied to the rest of the deck. So we're going to somehow try and use this to construct the answer we want for this slightly bigger argument. So this guy here is going to be a pair of things, and what we want to do is we want to take that pair of things and we want to add this additional card to the left-hand element of that pair, because the left-hand element of the pair is intended to be the red cards. Now, it's kind of awkward to do that here, um, and so the, the trick, when we want to build a recursive function that returns a tuple, is to instead of using this directly, we're going to use it in a local definition. So we're going to create a local definition. We're going to do the recursion just once in a local definition. And what we're going to do is we're going to give a name to the various parts of the answer that we get. We're going to call the first pile, the first hand, the red cards, the reds, and the rest the blacks. So we're going to use a pattern match to do that. The reds and the blacks will be defined to be the result that we get from doing split hand. So splitting the rest of the hand will give us a pile of reds and a pile of blacks. And in this case, we want to add that extra red card to the pile of reds. So what we're going to do in this case is build the answer we want by adding the card to the pile of reds. In the other case, we're going to simply take the reds as they are and add the card to the pile of blacks. So the trick that made this definition manageable and the one that maybe is a little bit tricky at first is this idea of giving a name to the pieces of the split hand function. If we didn't do that, we would have to possibly duplicate the call to this in many places and take the first component and the second component manually. And it would get a quite a it would end up being quite a mess. So the trick is if you're trying to do a direct recursion and build a pair of things, always give a name to the answer you expect to get from the recursive call and then build your solution using those components rather than using this thing directly. OK, let's look at the third definition. So the third definition is going to introduce a very powerful programming style called accumulating parameters. And in some ways, this version of the function is the one closest to the natural strategy that a human would use in sorting and splitting a deck of cards into the red cards and the black cards. So if you were if you're doing this manually, you would have the deck of cards and you would start at one end, you would take the top card and you would place it either in a pile that you call the reds and a pile that you call the blacks. 
So I'm going to have one pile for the reds and one for the blacks. And each card I either place in the red pile or the black pile. But in order to do that, I have to make a bit of space for those piles. In other words, I have to start with two, as it were, empty piles, place space where I can place cards, maybe in front of me on the table. And so the strategy of using an accumulating parameter is exactly that one. We're going to use a helper function. And the helper function not only will have the hand of cards, but it will have two additional parameters that correspond to these two piles of cards. Initially, those two piles will be empty. But as we progress through the deck of cards, those piles will grow according to whether we put the red card on the red pile or the black pile. So the general structure, let me just rename this guy. <laughs> We can't have multiple definitions, so we're going to have split hand prime here. So in this one, I'm going to have um, split hand, I'm going to call it double prime. It's the, it's the third version of the split hand function. And it's going to be defined using a helper function. And I'm going to call it split. I'm going to call it anything I like. I'm going to make it a local definition. Um, so it's not going to be used by anybody else other than this split hand function. And the trick will be that I'm going to start split this pile of cards H, starting with two empty decks of cards. There we go. Two empty decks of cards, one where we will pile uh, the, uh, the red cards and one where we'll pile the black cards. And I'll define this as a local function. So to split some hand of cards, I'm going to have three parameters. OK, let me just stop there and compile what I've got so far to fix any bugs that I might have introduced along the way, because I forgot to do that. So I'm stopping in the middle of something here, and I want to compile to check whether the other stuff I've done works OK. Uh, and I've got an incomplete definition here. So rather than trying to quickly write this definition before I compile or deleting it, um, there's, a, there's a neat trick. There's a function. There's a, there's a constant called undefined, which is basically, well, it's undefined. It gives an error. But the important thing is that it has any type you need it to be. If there's any type you want, then that means that it will, it will never cause a type error. So if I run this function, it won't work, but it means I, it won't stop me compiling it. Uh, and let me see. Oh, so here we go. Um, I um, uh, forgot something. What did I forget? I forgot the keyword where, introducing the local definition. So there we go. It was worth, worth double checking that. If I compile that again, it should be OK. Yeah, everything's fine now. OK, back to the second version of um, split hand. So we've got a helper function who's going to help us to find how to do this. And we're going to start out by using the helper function with two empty piles of cards where we're going to, uh, uh, where the result will end up. And it will end up there once we, once the first argument becomes empty. So once this is empty, I've got the reds and the blacks as my other two parameters. If we have an empty, then the answer will be constructed by pairing together the reds and the blacks. When it's non empty, well, in that case, we have add card to a hand, and we have our reds so far and our blacks so far. And in that case, I'm going to line these things up as we like to do. Well, now it's again going to depend, and the condition will be the same as this one over here. So it's the same condition that we used before. I'm going to write it on the next line because I'm, the definition is getting a bit wide. If the color of the card is red, then I'm going to recursively split the rest of the deck, that's the H, but now I would have added the card to the red pile. And otherwise, that's going to be equal to, it's going to be something similar. It's going to be I'm going to split the rest of the deck with the reds, but I'm going to add a card to the blacks. And there we have it. Now these functions are, they're doing the same job, namely splitting the deck into um, two piles. But actually, surprisingly, they are, they are slightly different. And the difference corresponds to the difference you can imagine when you, when you sort cards manually by hand into two piles. If I put the cards on the table face down, as it were, then I'm uh, keeping the order that they were in originally. But if I put them on the table face up, then I'm reversing the order. So in fact, the first two definitions preserve the order of the cards. This version will flip the order of the cards. The one, the card that is at the top, the first red card at the very front of the deck will end up in the bottom of the red pile. Now, of course, that may or may not matter, but it's good to know that when you use an accumulating parameter to build up a, a list or a recursive data type structure, then the order in which things are built up could possibly be 
the reverse of what you do when you do more of a direct recursion.